to do. All right. Um, um, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. We are here again for another uh, IDM progress report call. I think this is the fourth uh, call. call. So, so we are we mostly are half of the way of the, way in the project. In the project. And, and so let's get started because we're already a few minutes late. So, so uh, um, in terms of the agenda, uh, I already start recording. Um, so I will ask everyone to put uh, your name or your or GitHub handle in the list of attendees, if you haven't already. Um, also, I will need a volunteer to take notes. So is, is, anyone, is anyone able to, to do that for me? I can, I can do that. Oh, okay. Thank you, Paulo. Uh, by the way, you, you were muted, but that's not a problem. Um, so Paulo will be taking the notes for us. Um, and so I think at this point, uh, people already added the notes into the, the, the updates. So let's start with the round, round of intros and updates um, by the order of the attendees list. So um, I'm actually the first one. <laughs> I'm always the first one. I will, I will start putting my name in the, the bottom of the list. <laughs> anyway, um, so in terms of, of my, my updates, so by the way, I'm Andre Cruz, if you, if you don't know me. Um, I'm, I'm working on the project, mostly um, overviewing all the, the, the project and also focused on the backend part of the project. Um, and by backend, I don't mean servers, all of that. I mean the cryptography part and, and the, the, the wallet itself as the backend layer. So in terms of what I've done this week, um, let's go here. So I finished the, the initial implementation of two modules. modules that I've already presented in the last session, uh, but um, essentially I finished the human crypto keys module. Um, so in summary, it's a module that is able to generate uh, deterministic keys so that you can later import them either by the, their seed or by the mnemonic or via QR code or something else. And also I've finished the implementation of crypto keys composer which is a module that Human Crypto Keys uses uh, in order to export and import those generated keys in various formats. Um, name, uh, for instance, it's, it's able to export uh, in both P PKCS8, uh, which IPFS uses, and for the public key, it's able to export as subject public key info, um, which is the most uh, common format used nowadays. Um, also, I've uh, refactored and added um, model, the model entrance and exit animations um, because um, basically Sosa is, have, have decided about um, how the actual model entrance works and, and the exit as well. So I've refactored and implemented that or at least helped um, implementing, implementing that. And also I've uh, helped setting up the sector font because the sector font um, is not, uh, not an open font, it's actually a licensed font. So uh, I actually bought the font and uh, plated, uh, helped updating the repo and setting up licenses and all of that. So that um, you know, the project is MIT, except for this part specifically for the font, um, which has a different license. Um, also, I've review, reviewed a lot of code and pull requests from all the members of the team. Um, going forward, what I'm doing next, by the way, I have, I'm no, I have no tasks in progress and nor block, um, nor block. So what I'm going to do next is that I will help or I will structure the Nominus web app in terms um, of various aspects, namely, namely setting up the router um, so that we can have routes uh, so that we can navigate within the app, setting up the, the IDM uh, wallet and, and how can the React components easily connect to the wallet in order to obtain the state and call actions uh, uh, within the, the React components. Um, and there's also some minor tax, tasks there. Um, and will also, also help implementing the identity scope uh, on the IDM wallet, uh, but I think Paulo will, will uh, explain that in detail uh, afterwards. And also I will help in the research and development, development about how can we model the data uh, of each identity, namely, namely the credentials, the apps, the, share, the sessions with RBTV, and how can we replicate that easily? Uh, but I think Paul will also mention that um, in his in his um, in his time. Um, so that's that's it for me. 
um, heading on to the next one, I think it's Johnny Crunch. Do you have any play Johnny Crunch or is just a spectator? No, so I've been um, mostly working, so on the verifiable credentials working group. In fact, actually, I'm a little bit distracted. So. Or, or at least I'm not hearing anything. Oh, yeah, okay. my, my volume. How about now? Yeah, sorry, it was my problem. Never mind. So mostly I'm working on the uh, verifiable credentials uh, working group and actually I'm a little bit distracted because actually the, the calls overlap right now. And so a lot of that is the standards for the interoperability. So that's the right now the IP ID, which is a did method um, is is I'm still working on the, the specifications. But a lot of it is now actually once we have this method is actually work out some interoperability with other did methods. And so um, a lot of what I've been working on is actually is is these things, the chip and pin cards. Um, uh, hardware security modules, <laughs> and even Yubico actually has a hardware security mo mo module now. So it's actually ultimately about key um, uh, jet de de deriving keys from these different devices, and um, and getting it into either an Android phone or an iPhone for actually storing those keys for interoperability. So it's a lot of it is just um, uh, setting those up within um, the guy of Go code. Um, and then transporting the keys to your wallet and then ultimately to your, your, your either you, through your browser. So, um, so only to find out that these are terribly insecure. <laughs> Anyone knows, this, the, the RSA are actually, in this card, they're embedded, so you actually can't change the key. Um, right. These are from China, they're worthless. <laughs> Don't buy those. <laughs> and there are a lot of backdoors, I bet you. Um, it was actually like, so like uh, these are actually uh, the, um, uh, what is this, Ledger Na Nano is actually is where I actually store all of my Bitcoin billions right now. So actually these are, but you can't actually, you can't do a lot of interoperability about this is uh, writing the C code. And actually someone has done this for IOTA um, and creating it, and, but it's just a, a pain in the butt. So I haven't actually gone down that route yet, but I'm actually working a lot with um, the Yubico key and, um, and the hardware security module. So that's where I'm at. Do you know about uh, FIDO, the FIDO yes, Alliance? Of so. Yeah. yeah so, um, I think you weren't here, but we had like two sessions ago. Um, João Demo has um, the integration of uh, WebAuth N, uh, WebAuth N, I think. Yeah, yeah, you and I played with this in Berlin, yeah. So, he played with that, and essentially, you have um, the ability to use hardware, um, hardware wallets that are yeah. FIDO compliant. Or FIDO Alliance compliant, uh, right. but but also e, e, the WebAuth N supports using um, the hardware that is within your wallet. Sorry, within your uh, Mac MacBook or your um, iOS device, because your your for instance, my my laptop actually has a hardware a device that is able to encrypt stuff uh, for me, and, and and I can leverage that to store information encrypted within the 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 hardware, um, yep. or at least in the storage encrypted with a key that only the hardware is able to decrypt. Um, so we explored that to unlock the IDM wallets, but, but later on we can um, explore using hardware, hardware keys in order to import your master key or at least obtain a signature of your, of your um, master key, basically. Uh, but that, that's still too far away in terms of how yep. it was met. So yeah, and I think uh, so. Uh, the hardware wallets for the FIDO Alliance actually, uh, so the Yubico key actually does su support that. Um, but unfortunately, actually, it's X509 self-signed certificates is all you can do. So you actually, you can't do like a SHA-256 hash and then signing that with a with a elliptic curve. It's so it's it's very limited to just uh, X509. Um, so it's really trying to get to the it's either. Um, Signing it with RSA or ideally with um, um, ED25519, which is a lot of the, the curve that I'm focusing on, or uh, SecP256K1. So that's where I've actually gone to more of a hardware security module. So, and so it's ultimately, because I think it's ultimately like I, I, it's generation of the keys, and I, I don't trust myself to be smart enough to do that. And so I want to push that off into some device that actually is, is recognized as being uh, secure and audited and just basically using whatever key that actually comes from that device that actually is like outside my control. It's all about then once having that is signing and, and, um, um, uh, uh, and then just getting to the cool stuff. Uh, I want to get to the cool stuff.
Great to hear that. So uh, I, I imagine that that's, that will be a long way for you to, you know, to get into this stuff and, and actually, you know, get something um, out of it, I guess. Or is it, or, or are you more optimistic? So I think it's, um, you know, at, right now, uh, what is it? 20 lines of code. So it really, once you actually get to it, it actually, so that's Go code um, interfacing with um, the Go C library. Um, so once, once actually, it, 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 it's relatively simple. It's just understanding the complexity and, and uh, simplifying it and realizing just that I get easy. This is the standard for the US government and like for military purposes, but they're bogus. So it's. All right. So is that it uh, for, for you, Johnny? Can, can yep, I go? That was enough. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So adding on to the next one, which is Souza. Do I Souza? Um, Hello. Hey, guys. So for the last two weeks, uh, I've concluded the design for the social proofs, the device list, and apps pages. Uh, these screens uh, rely into uh, uh, one component only, which is the cart, and it's appropriated for one device, one app, or more than one, and those, those variations will depend on, on the layout. Um, uh, already finished the design for the profile as well, uh, with uh, three spotlights, which work as an entry point for each page that I already mentioned. So another thing that I concluded was the, the standardization for the current illustrations that I'm using across the pages, uh, and they, they were added to the style guide, with the proper pads and the, so they can be tweaked by the implementation side. Um, I already finished the morph animation for the brand, ang uh, brand icon into the lock icon. Uh, I used Lottie, it's a great tool from, from Airbnb and it works uh, really flawless. So in progress right now, I have the uh, temporary illustration for the profile page. It, it was something that I already mentioned on the progress uh, last, on the last two weeks. Um, that there are still a bit uh, some details to, to refine and it's all, almost finished but it's some, something that I maybe I can conclude uh, today um, let me see so the next steps for me regarding this sprint will be the design the notifications component uh, predict all the scenarios for the, the notifications itself where the where and how they appear uh, across the pages so another detail that, I, that I'll be working on will be the seeking status uh, research about uh, which information we can use and how to show the replication status, uh, predict, predict the, syn the syncing status for each identity displayed on the side panel, which is included in all the pages, of course, and uh, uh, add or include the most complete feedback of this status on the profile page. Um, another um, uh, step for me for, for, the, for this sprint will be design the authentication prompt uh, that is presented to the user when an app wants to authenticate with, with the project with Nomius. And yeah, for me, that's, that's almost it. Any questions? Thank you, Andrea. I actually forgot to, always forget, forget to ask if there is any questions. There are any <laughs> questions. Anyway, is there any questions for, for, for Andre? No questions? And by the way, if you have any questions for me, please ask them. If I forgot to ask. And if you guys want to, to see any, any of this, uh, of, of this, uh, Current tasks, I can provide the, the, the links. I, I didn't include them on the, on, the, on the agenda, but I, I can uh, just fix with a, with a URL um, across to any, any of the tasks. Yeah, quite and easy. actually, if, if um, anyone wants to look into the designs and yeah, yeah, yeah. All that that's stuff, what I'm saying. It's yeah. here documented in the design uh, section of the README of the PM IDM uh, repo on, on the PFS GPR. You have design, and then you have here. A link to the Google uh, Drive folder that is public. You can navigate freely there and, and see all the work that is being produced in terms of design. And also, all the code base um, is currently living on several repos. Um, this list might grow over time. For instance, uh, two weeks ago, we didn't have both of these repos here CryptoKey Composer and Human CryptoKey. So, um, we'll be updating these if you want to check out the code as well. So, heading on. And proceeding, we have Pedro. Go ahead, Pedro. Okay, guys. Hi. I will be quicker than Sosa, I promise. Uh, so for the past two weeks, 
Um, what I've been doing was I adjusted models and flow model contents components for different resolutions. I have the link uh, on the on the clip pad if you want to, to check it out. Um, I also implemented the type select and type option components that will be useful for, for the user to, to choose um, the, their type of identity. And we also use this, we will also use this component for, for the type of the device that they want to, to, to have when they are creating a new identity. Um, what I am currently doing, I am fixing some bugs on uh, flow model contents component. Uh, I will try to do this uh, as soon as possible so that I can, I can keep with implementation of create identity user journey that this was where, what I was doing uh, previously and I, I, I need to, to, to keep with that. And I will also implement the avatar component that I will also need the, this component on the, on the create identity user journey. And that's it for me. Any questions? Okay. No questions for, for Pedro? All right, so let's keep going. So next on the list, we have Dominguez Gio, or Gio Dominguez. Hi guys. So since the past time we, since the last time we met, I concluded the lock screen implementation that I show you that in that progress report call. Uh, in the past sprint, I've been working on the setup blocker user journey, which I'll be showing, showing you the, the current state in the, in, in the demo section. And after I finish that uh, journey, I will be working on the import identity user journey. So if you have any questions. So you have a, a demo for us, right? Uh, yeah. All right, awesome. Is there any questions for Jill? No questions? I think most questions might arise in your demo. Anyway, uh, let's proceed and let's go. In. So, hi guys. Um, so during this sprint, I concluded uh, the mm -hmm. human crypto keys. Uh, Andre started this, but uh, since uh, crypto keys composer actually uh, got him a little bit of time uh, to, to finish. Uh, I picked it up and uh, finished it myself. And uh, I also finished the DID first implementation in JS IDM wallet. Currently, this implementation only supports the IPID method. Uh, in the future, we want to support more, but for now, uh, it's the only one that we are supporting. Uh, I don't have anything in progress or block. Our sprint is starting uh, and uh, in, during the, this new sprint, I will implement the identity scope in the IDM wallet, wallet module. And also, as Andre said, uh, I will do a little bit of uh, research and development about the modeling data uh, of NordVTV, TV, about the identities, uh, credentials, apps, and sessions. So uh, we look forward to um, check uh, the best way to, to, to store this kind of information, uh, how we are going to do it, how we are uh, sharing this between imported identities and, and all of that stuff. Um, so this was mainly it. Uh, do you guys have any questions for me? No? Okay. No so, so we can... Yeah, yeah. so... Um, Regarding the, the identity scopes, uh, scope on the DM, DM wallet, just to, to be uh, more detailed, what you, it will actually do is, is to use the previously implemented DID scope on the IDM wallet. So it will call the create method, the, the import method, and so on. But we'll actually store the actual identity in the storage of the IDM wallet encrypted with the secret, uh, the secret key that is in the locker. And also it will, because it will persist the, 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 that, that information in the storage, we'll be able to also implement uh, the methods such as get identity and list identities, um, list identities that are stored within the wallet. Um, right, so adding on, I think, okay, we have Jim, but Jim uh, had, to, had, to, had to, to leave. So um, let's go into the second part. I think we are, um, 
exactly in time because it's half an hour, sorry, half, half an hour for the first part and half an uh, hour for, for the second part. So let's start with the demos. And I think uh, you guys forgot to put the demos yeah. here. <laughs> but we have two demos to show. We have, uh, let's start with the one uh, from Gio, which is the setup uh, locker user journey. So I will stop sharing. Okay, uh, let me know when you see the shared screen. Yes. Are you seeing the shared screen? Okay. So uh, this is the not finished state of the setup locker user journey. It starts by asking the user to input a, a passphrase. So we can start putting a, a passphrase. Oh. Well, this is a, a great start. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, let's, let's see if we can restart. At least the code was beautiful in the, in the, in the yeah. passphrase. <laughs> Let's try again. If, if it doesn't work, it's okay. I think you made a factor or something. Okay. Work. I'll make a sacrifice to the demo gods. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's okay. Something is wrong because even even the password uh, that you're feeling the strength indicator is not reacting at all. But if you start typing, you see. Yeah. There's no reaction. So perhaps okay. you are. With the wrong version of the, of the yeah, it's system. it's possible. But okay. I have I have a, a, a password that works, so we can we can try with that because this this issue is probably to do with the warning messages. So I have a suggestion. Let's move to the okay. Okay. Yeah. all demo so that you can see. Okay. So can you please stop sharing? Yeah. And because yeah, I'm hearing myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go into Paulo's demo. So. so. I'm not able to hear. Are you guys able? Yeah, I I'm My hearing. Mind. Oh, wait, I'm not hearing okay. Paul. I'm not hearing yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. He's breaking for me. At least for me, he's breaking right now. Guys, Guys can, you can you hear me? me? Yeah. yeah. No, okay, okay, okay. Okay, sorry. So I will uh, demo the um, human crypto keys that we did uh, this last sprint. So basically, uh, our, the human crypto keys currently exposes three methods. It uh, generates a key pair get key pair from mnemonic and get key pair from seed. I will explain this in a little bit of detail, but I'll show you. So I will uh, run a demo here. So we will generate a key pair, uh, an RSA key pair. Uh, and after that, we will we'll use uh, a mnemonic and I will explain it uh, later to get the same key pair and use the same seed. So here are the results. Firstly, we generated a key pair, and the key pair uh, was generated uh, with RSA, and these are the parameters that were used to, to, to generate this key pair. But uh, we have a mnemonic here. So what are we doing? Firstly, we are using BIP39, uh, a well-established Bitcoin, <laughs> um, how can I say it? Uh, it's a method to generate. Yeah, to generate. Uh, yeah. So basically, we generate uh, a mnemonic uh, with that module, and as you can see here, uh, this mnemonic will be able to recover your key pair. So basically, um, if you ever uh, lose uh, or you don't know um, your actual key. Uh, keys, for example, your private key that it's encoded in PEM here, you can uh, use this mnemonic to later recover it. Uh, also, this mnemonic uh, will be transformed or we will derive a seed from this mnemonic. And the seed that was derived from this mnemonic, it's this one. And this seed will also be able to recover the same key pair that was generated. So, uh, 
we actually generate uh, a key, the, the key pair, with this seed. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> sorry. We actually, it depends on the, on the, on the algorithm. If it is uh, an RSA uh, key, uh, key pair encryption, uh, basically uh, we use this, uh, this seed to, uh, for uh, the entropy of uh, PRNG. Uh, a pseudo random number generator and this seed will serve it as its entropy to and after that we will use that prng and no forge to generate the the key pair so uh, this is it this is all the information that you get with the generate key pair uh, and you can store this mnemonic and this seed for later recovery and for example what happens if uh, you lose this. You can use the get key pair from mnemonic method that we also exposed and if you pass this mnemonic you will get exactly the same key pair. So uh, I don't know if you guys can see it because <laughs> it's quite big and, and it's encoded in PEM uh, using the crypto key, crypto keys composer that uh, Andre developed in the in this print. Uh, but they are exactly the same. Both private keys and public keys are exactly the same. And this is the mnemonic that was used. So uh, we have spell, panel, duty, nominee. It's exactly the same as provided here. Spell, panel, duty, nominee, and it ends in match and alarm. Exactly the same here. So, and we also have the method get keep paired from seed that actually does the same thing. You just pass the seed that uh, served as the entropy for the, an RSA uh, PRNG for the generation of an RSA key pair, and it's exactly the same. Uh, also, we provide a few options to compose the, the keys uh, differently based on what the, the package that Andre did, the crypto keys composer, uh, provides us. So, for example, we can use uh, Currently, we are using PK, PKCS8 for the for the private key and SPKI PEM for the public key. But we can uh, adjust this and use our other kinds of formats uh, depending on our needs. So we provide um, a set of options that you can uh, configure and uh, get your your key pair composed in whatever you like. So. This is mainly it. Uh, I don't know if uh, Andre wants to, <laughs> to add something. Uh, is it possible for you to quickly switch to AD25509? Sure, sure, sure. Because sure, sure. we already, already support those types of keys. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, the demo example that I have here. Firstly, I'm generating the key pair with the algorithm. Where the algorithm is RSA, as I said it. Uh, and after that, I'm uh, doing the get key pair from mnemonic from the first result. So I'm using the mnemonic and the same algorithm. So, but what if I change this to, to this? So let's run this again and see. So actually, the first thing that we notice is that the generation is quite a lot, uh, quite a lot faster, uh, but it's uh, because of the algorithm that we choose. So we are using ED25519. The mnemonic, it's another mnemonic, another generated mnemonic um, based on an English word list. Uh, in the future, we, we hope to support other kind of, uh, of, ki other kind of word lists um, to support other languages. Uh, and here it is, the, the same, uh, it generated a, a private key and a public key. Uh, it's encoded, I think, this is encoded in PKCS. Yes. Uh, it's, it's the same, it's PKCS. It's the same, yeah, it's the same, yeah. And by the way, did, uh, can you mute this, Paul? By the way, this, um, this, the strategy for AD25519 um, is to get, so the seed has, has 64 bytes, and to generate the, the seed for the AD2551, because uh, the way you generate this, the, the AD25519 um, key is to take a seed of 32 bytes, so we take the, the, the first 32 bytes of the 64 byte seed. Uh, based on the mnemonic. So it's pretty straightforward and also the, the actual speed of the generation is much faster. That's why we actually 
are very interested in AD25519 just because it has, you know, more, uh, it's more secure. Um, and also it's, it's much faster, both to generate, both to sign, to verify signatures and all of that. So we hope in the future to um, do a pull request to lib P2P crypto in order to use the crypto keys composer library uh, that that we both uh, created in order for it to be able to import and export ad25519 keys so that we can later use those keys in ipns records so that we can publish uh, ipns records using these types of keys um i think that's it um i i think right and that's already supported in uh, the go version yeah, that's correct. what I've been using. So I, I published to uh, IPNS using the Go. And the, unfortunately, there's some issues right now in that um, it's the key format. So right now, it's really just stored as binary in the IPFS folder. And so uh, if you do generate it and store it in the, in, in the IPFS folder and reuse that one, then it's um, you just have to pull it from the binary file. And then it's not really very secure to store it. And on, on, on disk, it'd be better to store it. Um, yeah, uh, I've, I've not included any task in order to actually integrate these in p 2 p crypto, but I will try to do to do the integration in my spare time, hopefully in the weekend or something like that, um, because I'm really interested in having these types of keys. It's really fast and, and more secure, more secure and, and also actually they are smaller. The public keys are very small, which is kind of nice for for in terms of bandwidth and all of that. Um, and that's it. Cool. More questions for, for this demo, for Paulo? No questions. All right, so is it ready, Gio? Yeah. A second, yeah. Uh, let's share it again. Okay. I had to, it had to break once at least. Um, okay, so let's try this with a secure password. And it should give us uh, the information that, in fact, secure password is obviously not a secure password. So it doesn't enable the continue button, even if we we paste in the in the confirm section. So we have to select uh, a better password than this. Just for example, this one. And once they match, and uh, once they match, the this line turns blue, and uh, the continue button is enabled, allowing us to proceed to the next step. The next step is the setup expiration time. So we have this slider right here to determine how long the locker will stay open uh, without any interaction before it closes again. It, it locks again. So we finish it, and we proceed to the to the to the screen we have as our current main screen obviously it won't be this is that placeholder <laughs> yeah it's a placeholder for it's it's from the demo that paulo did some time ago uh, i can also show you by the way the finished state of the lock screen which i showed you in the the past progress report call uh, bear in mind that my my computer is currently running a lot of stuff at the same time, so the animation may not be totally fluid, but here's the exit animation for the lock screen. So if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask, and I'll be stopping the, the screen share. Yeah, it's it, awesome. it, <laughs> in terms of the, the animation, it was um, not, smooth because of the, the the zoom in the compression and so on so if you want uh, you can record a small video and upload okay. it to youtube or something like that and link in link it in the notes okay. um, so that people can can actually see the smooth experience and not the compressed experience that we have here in zoom um, so i think that's all for the demos so heading on i will share my screen Again, so to confirm, so yes, we have just two demos. You're missing your demo here in the yeah. list. So if you could fill it, it would be nice. So uh, we have like 13 minutes. Um, and if, if there are any questions, general questions that you want to ask, um, 
feel free to ask them. Um, you, you, you can always reach us in IFC. We are in uh, IPFS identity uh, channel and also in the IPFS dynamic data uh, IRC channel, which was, you know, the identity project started within that uh, working group. Um, so you can always reach us there. Um, but but if, you, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, and I think that's all. Johnny Crunch, you have any questions? Yeah, how about where are the, the in, in the browser, where are the, the keys stored? All right, so um, the keys, um, we, we avoid storing the master key in the, in the storage of the browser. That's why we have, uh, at the moment, a bear in mind this is just uh, a way to, to store your uh, master key, but we are uh, looking into having a paper key. So essentially, you have you have you print your paper key or you write your mnemonic. That's that's why we have that module, uh, the twelve words somewhere. Or you can print a document uh, and store it safely. I know that is not this is not a very user friendly uh, process. We are looking into other processes uh, such as social um, recovery mechanisms or even the hardware wallets that you that you mentioned. But for now, uh, we are. Um, we are using the, or we are looking into using the paper key as as a first strategy, but we are not storing the master key. Uh, but we are we are storing the device keys. So essentially, you have your your master key that controls your uh, your IPNS record in case of IPID, and then we have the device keys which are the which are listed in your DID documents. Uh, but we are storing uh, in the storage of the IDM wallet, which is encrypted. So that's why we have. Uh, the setup locker and the, the lock screen that you just saw. But basically, when, when you put a passphrase, um, and also we are looking to other methods such as you know, the touch ID and, and face ID later on and so on. But, but essentially, the storage is encrypted, meaning that your device keys will be encrypted in the storage. So let's say that in case in a catastrophic event you get stolen, your computer gets stolen. Even if a hacker, um, you know, is able to read your stuff in the local storage, it will be encrypted, and it, it will give you plenty of time to go into another, another device using your master key to revoke that device. All right, cool. I think that's it. Um, yeah. Any more questions, Johnny? No, nope. no more questions. All right. So, I think I think we are over and. Thank you for, for your participation and see you in the next IDM progress report call in two weeks from now. Bye-bye. See you guys. Thank Bye. you for stopping by. See ya.